Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match cast. This time we're going to be watching Cybernetic Pony fight Sheridan. And if those names are not familiar to you, that's because they are both quite new. Cybernetic Pony is starting out in the right side of the map, playing a CISO. Sheridan is the left side of the map, playing Vekir. Both these players are fairly new, but this is not their first game, respectively. I think at Cybernetic Pony's probably played about a dozen games at this point. Sheridan, I'm not sure, but he's also not new. In assassin mode, and... Okay, Sh Shadowing Pony is using his Akron to scout. Sheridan is not, apparently, at this point, using his Akron to scout, which, as mentioned before, is kind of counterintuitive, but is pretty much the only thing that Akrons do well at all. Otherwise, they're just there to not die. And, of course, not dying isn't exactly doing anything. It's more just avoiding something. So, omission of an action, and... Omission, omitting actions is not necessarily the most interesting thing to do. However, it can act, at least in the early part of the game, to figure out what the opponent is up to, since there's a spare unit. That being said, Vekir and Ciso don't really need that for scouting. They have their own spare units to scout with. And speaking of which, that is exactly what both players are doing. Sheridan sending out his Tethvir and Zion... Oh, Shinvir and Ta Zionvir. That's unexpected. Normally it's your Tethvir and Shinvir. And it looks like Sheridan Pony is going to be fighting against Grekin instead of Vekir. Sheridan switching races very early on in the match, or, sorry, later on in the match. Okay, this is really bizarre. I don't, I mean, he's clearly got the idea that the Akron is supposed to scout ultimately. Wasn't doing it with the Vekir Akron, but he is doing it with the Grekin one. I'm not sure what he's planning on doing, because of course the Vekir race choice was before the Grekin one. I, as far as I can tell. Yeah, the Grekin one happens right here. It's about to get wiped out by the blue time wave. So ultimately, that Grekum scouting is never going to really come through. Several points I'm not going to find out about that. Sheridan is going to ultimately be Vecure unless he jumps back. Thus, I don't really know what he was planning on doing with that rare switch there. Can't really say. But what I can say is, he is unless he jumps back further and actually changes the original race switch a race pick, which he probably won't, that he is going to be playing as Vecure for this match, and that the Grekum thing was a minor distraction that didn't amount to anything. However, very interesting, he is going for a quick proxy base couple RPs right next to Sheridan's main. I'm... Well, not right next to it, but pretty close to. I'm kind of surprised. I've never seen this before. I'm glad this is being done, though, since I like seeing expansions and things used in... Oh! Okay, there's the Acron right here. Sheridan Pony is just hanging out by the expansion, natural expansion of Sheridan. Double-checking what's going on there. So Sheridan building out some RPs here is an interesting choice. I'm curious to see how it'll pan out. I imagine it'll pan out fairly well, but I'm really not sure. I have never seen a player do this before. Normally players sort of stick in their main base and do nothing else. And we saw the last game, Cybernetic Pony actually went north and expanded a bit there. And it looks like he is doing exactly the same thing here, killing the comma at the northeast side of the map and likely be expanding to the north base. Just destroying the comm hub at the two minute mark, or halfway done the two minute mark, so about three minute mark should be done. At 2.46, he's when he's done. While Sheridan sneaking into that little base, we saw the foundation was down here and there's a couple RPs as well. There's that foundation being built. And a factory very quickly being built for Sheridan at the 3 minute mark. And is Sheridan building up an expansion yet? No, he is not. Oh, sorry, Sheridan Pony, I should say. Sheridan is building up an expansion, like I said, down here. Unusual, but very interesting. I'm curious to see how this will work because, once again, this is novel. It's also kind of clever. I mean, no one ever does this, so who would expect that would happen? And an annex being built very close, likely to build a depot a beside it because that depot would allow him to build vehicles. And he gets a nice little proxy there. I'm... Like I said, I'm really curious. I haven't seen this before. This doesn't seem like a terrible idea. It just seems like something that's kind of difficult to defend since your main base is now open. And if Cybernetic Pony goes for a really quick attack with ATHCs, which is exactly... Oh, no, Lancers is what he's going for. But still, a really quick attack could deal a fair amount of damage. Could actually make this rendered moot. The Akron being completely open and no other defenses being built, no foundations or anything. However, Sheridan has a fair amount of cash in the bank. And right now, Cybernetic Pony is double-checking the main base. He might suspect that Sheridan is simply too new to know what to do and thus not suspect anything is up. But if he realizes there is something up, I and mean, normally, if you see this, you should realize something is up. If the opponent's base doesn't have a lot, and this is true for most RTS games, if the opponent's base has very little in it, less than you'd expect, they are up to something. There is a proxy somewhere. In this case, a proxy foundation set. Proxy annex, and it looks like it'll be a depot and an aerial control center with these other two foundations. And Sheridan definitely has the money for it. 
not having spent it on anything else. Well, Saturday Pony, at this point in time, not really focused, so he's not spending any money now. He is, at the present, at the 453 mark. That is when he's mostly been focused, and he's been building quite a bit there. Macroing at the present, as I have mentioned before, is the way to go. Though neither player having encountered each other means that neither of them really has any incentive to go further in the past and lose control that way. Normally, you'd only go further in the past because you kind of have to. You basically don't have any way around other than dealing with what your opponent has done. I mean, you can't just go in and say, oh, wait, my opponent is... He's attacking me. Or... That's when you'd want to change the past. That's when you'd want to remicro and do all that stuff. And neither player has attacked each other, so this is completely moot. Sheridan has built up Zero Control Center and Depot. We see that he is going very quickly for Shin Turchers. Well, fairly. Actually, okay, 744 mark. Not that quickly. He's waiting for the timeline to catch up so he can actually continue to act. He's stuck in the right edge of the timeline and not able to do much of anything. I don't anticipate this is going to work especially well given that Cybernetic Pony started with Lancers. Shin Turchers are mainly anti ground units. And there's not much else that Cybernetic Pony has to defend. He is building a Zion Pulsar, which once again is a bad choice. Teth, Teth Turcher would have been a good support unit. Possibly Teth Pulsar, but hard to say, but Zion Pulsars are purely anti-ground. This is going to be rather tricky to pull off. However, it looks like Saturday Pony's Akron has been spotted by Sheridan Zion Veer, and Saturday Pony likely to change where that is. Yes, he is moving it out of the way. Moving it out of the way right into this base, he's going to be completely aware of what's going on. And this is well before Sheridan even builds up that Deep War Aerial Control Center and starts building up anything that he's going to be working with for the rest of the game, or plans to work with for the rest of the game. And Sheridan already sees this coming. Saturday Pony not quite aware of this, but he's definitely aware that he's seeing damage, so likely realizing something is up. Has not checked it, doesn't have a visual confirmation, but he knows there is damage in the timeline. And he knows that there is something going on here. So this is Sheridan doing a lot of expansion. I'm... I'm intrigued. This is not commonly done, but I think it's not commonly done for the wrong reasons. I think it might be because players are a bit too paranoid about what could happen. I mean, it's something that I... I would kind of like to see higher level players weigh in on. Not necessarily do, just weigh in on. I'm... I think it's not a terrible idea. I was kind of building up these maps so that this sort of thing was possible, but I never see it with high-level players, and I'm sure there's a pretty good reason why in terms of... I know for myself, I tend not to do it just because I don't see the reason of having everything spread out as much as it is right now. Because right now, Cybernetic Pony is going to be able to just attack the main base with impunity if you wanted to. This base is a bit better defended, but even then, it's kind of tricky to work with. And... Cybernetic Pony is fully aware of this expansion here. He's moved his Akron out of the way, so it won't get damaged. What Sheridan sees is not at all true. And the Lancers are going to be possibly moving in. I mean, Cybernetic Pony can attack at any point in the last several minutes. Which is probably why I wouldn't do this. Just because my opponent could attack me within the last several minutes. And that's exactly what Sheridan is going to be fighting against. Cybernetic Pony going to the 6 minute mark. 2 minutes down from when he first saw the expansion. And starting to take it out. Getting rid of the Shin Beer that's there. Or at least heavily damaging it. But will ultimately get rid of it. The Foundations are doing a valiant job healing. And it looks like they will ultimately... No, they will not allow it to kill the Lancer. One Lance living with three health, and the Foundation's now not able to do much of anything, so Sheridan is kind of losing what he'd already built up, which is unfortunate for him. But Cyberman Pony taking good advantage of the timeline mechanics, and Sheridan now moving in... Moving in some infantry and his Akron into that base. He's moving his Tethvir in. Very good idea. Tethvir being, of course, the dedicated anti-air unit, and probably the best anti-air unit that Vecchio has, especially for cost. You build a large number of them. Like, good half a dozen or dozen or so, and you'll tear apart any air that comes to you defensively. But it looks like Sheridan is completely abandoning any investment in this base, dropping it completely, undoing everything that happened with it, and leaving it, developing his main base instead, and using that basically as a small distraction, which did manage to get some cash. He did get a few pulls off of these RP. Well, with these RPs, he managed to get, let's see, eight pulls each. It's about 64 liquid crystal per box, and... Same for the Q-Plasma. So 128 Liquid Crystal and 64 Q-Plasma is not bad. That's actually going to be a couple Zion, Zion Pulsars. That's going to be enough to build up this expansion and be able to get away with it. However, he does need to build up more resource processors. This is very important. He does have a couple built to the southwest. However, Sheridan is aware of that. In the southeast as well, he has some built up. So the decentralized economy is certainly going to be easier to harass. However, it's going to be harder to find than it would be if it was in one base. And the Shinvir, unfortunately, moving back, having not had its orders completely undone... So Sheridan may lose the Shinvir. It looks like he, he will indeed lose the Shinvir unless he jumps back a minute and moves that out of the way and makes sure that its orders were properly followed. But he appears more focused on getting the Teth Pulsars, which is a good idea. Still, that Shinvir shouldn't die unnecessarily. 
I imagine he was trying to try to rebuild that expansion or build something else with the foundation with that Shinveer. It does have some Teth Pulses, however. None of them have skip teleport. They're all going to be having to just drive in normally. And Shardan actually needs to be worried about in the future. Seven Ring Pony is further in the future at the 10 minute mark. He's attacking directly in the main base and dealing a lot of damage. But Shardan is well prepared. Seven Ring Pony having gotten Machinery and having gotten his Tornad. Getting a Macrofab as well. Likely to get Mar Tanks and Twin Mars. Or possibly Frigates if he's focusing heavily on air. Or if he has Machinery, I mean, he obviously could focus on heavy cruisers, which we've seen before. Rarely, but we see them. However, Shardan definitely prepared at this point. He At the 8-minute mark, he has enough Teth Pulsers. So he should be able to fend off everything that's coming in right now from Cybernetic Pony. And he is well aware of what may be happening. So Cybernetic Pony's attack here is likely a bluff. I mean, he's probably trying to see what he can do. Actually, it's probably not a bluff. He probably is going sincerely for it. But, of course, this time around, we do have the Teth Pulsers getting in the way. And with Foundations healing them... Unfortunately, only one of them able to actually hit the Tornado at that point in time at the 9 or 10 minute mark or so when we were looking. Chardon needs to build up a bit more, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to add a couple Teth of Ears, just raw Teth of Ears, to this group. Like I said before, they're very efficient for cost. The only downside is their low health, and their range is actually not bad, but their low health really is the big thing. But if you have enough of them, it's not a big deal. They just. One of them dies until the rest of them dealing damage. So if you have the Teth Pulsers here, although they don't have a lot of health either, it's actually. They have barely any more health than the Teth Veer. But they still have a Teth Veer inside, so they pop out, and that's still a little bit more firepower. But it looks like Sheridan is not going for defense. He's going for an attack or he's going for an attack of his own while Cybernetic Pony goes for an attack. Cybernetic Pony, about two minutes up from there, thinks he has still defeated Sheridan, and he is going for Martanks. Not got ground units though, so not able to get any twin Mars and still producing tornadoes regularly. While Sheridan back at the Well, nine minute mark right at the beginning of the attack. He is able to fend it off, getting rid of the Lancers very handily. At least fend off with the Lancers. The Tornado's still dealing a lot of damage and able to take care of the Teth Pulsers quite effectively. Not sure what these Teth Pulsers are doing, though. Like I said before, moving out of the way, and it's very unwise that they are doing this. But it looks like he is going for an attack. I don't know why he's going for a counterattack. He knows he's getting attacked. And really, when air units are coming to you, that's the best thing. Because in Akron, air units are essentially immortal unless the other player makes a mistake and lets them die. So just due to their high speed. They can easily get out of the way. You can easily jump back five seconds and move them out of combat, and they will be perfectly fine. But Cybernetic Pony is moving them in and committing to this attack, which is going to not go so well for him, at least not for the Lancers. The Tornads still have a bit of a chance, but no, even they are going down quickly. And another Teth Pulsar coming in as well to finish off the last Tornad. And the Teth Fear might be able to finish it off in time, and it looks like it will be able to. The Tornad moving over, getting hit by both Teth Veers and falling. But one more Tornad at the north. Probably won't turn the tide. Still worth noting, it did kill one of the Teth Veers. But the other Teth units will tear it to shreds. So, Sheridan able to defend his base. Cybernetic Pony losing the forces he had sent. And he's not got the chrono energy to actually send them back. He can rescue one of his Tornads, but that's about it. He can't deal with the other one. There, And it looks like he is maybe trying to rescue them. This one's basically dead. The one in the north is the only one he really has a chance to get out of the way, and he's not focusing on that at all. So he lost a lot of units right there. Definitely, Sheridan beat him for cost, so I think at this point they're fairly even. I mean, Sheridan, like I said, he lost that proxy base, but for the most part he didn't spend much on it. Just the RPs, really. And at this point, the amount of resources that's been put into this Tornade, that's... Each Tornade is about... Oh, I can actually double check. Each Tornade is 65 liquid crystal and 75 cube plasma, which means for every Tornade killed, that's essentially two resource processors worth of resources that could have been mined. Which means at this point, Sheridan has made up for his earlier blunder. So both players certainly even and... Oh, that's not earlier blunder, but the earlier proxy... The earlier risk he took that did not pay off for him. And Saturday and Pony trying again with more Tornads. His Mar Tanks have not started to come up very much yet. Or... No, they haven't. I do not see them at all on the map. They are not in minimap. He does not have any of those yet. And losing another Tornado, this foundation, staying alive, nothing really being damaged from Shardan's end. So Shardan, definitely cost-effective in his defense. Cybernetic Pony needs to step it up. He's going for... These Mar Tanks will be effective, but they aren't coming up until further in the future, probably another minute or so. And he doesn't have ground units, so they're still only going to be effective as tank destroyers, basically, not as large-scale artillery units. Given what is going on right now, I'd say it's not a terrible idea, however... An aerial control center is coming up soon, and air units will beat Mar Tanks. Our Mar Tanks have no anti-air attack, so they will lose. They won't be able to deal with that fight. And there we go. Cybernetic Pony is going to have... Sorry. Sheridan's getting auto-defense. 
Suffering opponents going to have to deal with even more defensive structures being built up, and I think Sheridan is actually taken to Vecchio fairly well. He's playing them for their base, he's playing them for stuff that works well defensively with the Teth units, and he is spreading out a fair bit. And the thing with Vecchio is they can actually get away with, in the mid to late game, they can get away with spreading out like that because their units can teleport, especially once you get Gay Tech and all your units to skip teleport. You can really get away with it, and Martank coming in, this will be very painful. It should be able to tear about everything that Sheridan has right now. Sheridan needs to either build Zion Pulsars or get air units, preferably. He can definitely aff Well, actually, can't afford them. He has too much Q-Plasma, not enough Liquid Crystal. He needs more Liquid Crystal. Probably just convert some of the Q-Plasma into Liquid Crystal and build an aerial control center with that and use that to build some air units. He needs a Shin Turcher to deal with this. Anything else he tries to use will not be particularly effective, even with the healing. Martanks are meant to destroy other tank units. And with four of them coming in, I don't see any way that he's going to be able to get out. Five of them coming in, actually. And, of course, the Grand Union gets built, which it isn't. Aerospace is being the focus right now. Is Severin really planning on getting nukes, or is he just trying to get upgraded Tornads? Aerospace upgrades Tornads and allows for nukes to be built and the Macrofab equipped to heavy cruisers. Probably just going for the Tornad upgrade, however. He has invested quite a lot into Tornads, and he has not invested anything into heavy cruisers. Also, building some RPs to the north. He will have a slightly stronger economy. I think both players are still even at this... No! Sharon is actually slightly behind in terms of economy. He, like I said, sort of made up for it by destroying the air units cost effectively, but at this point he's now going to deal with these Martanks getting rid of one of them, but his sign Pulse are taking quite a bit of damage in the meantime. Actually, he jumped back in time, got a couple more Zion Pulsers, and those will be much more effective. Tronon moving in, but Aerospace haven't been upgraded, so Tronon is definitely more powerful than it would have been without Aerospace. Actually, how much more powerful it is. Oh, okay, against ground, it's... Oh, an extra two damage per second. That's not bad. Of course, what's really the concern is the fact that these Martanks are dealing with the anti-air units, which are still effective getting rid of the Tornad, and the Zion Pulsar is taking up the rear and tearing apart the Martanks. However, Chardon wisely trying to pull these Martanks in closer to the foundations and dealing with them on his home turf. Able to get rid of them without too much issue, and only losing... He lost a Teth Pulsar and a few Teth Veer, but he can rebuild the Teth Pulsar from the Teth Veer, and losing Teth Veer isn't that expensive. Martanks are also not that expensive, but still, he's doing well in defense. Cybernetic Pony continuing to try to figure out what to do so he can actually deal with this. And he's also a minute down from there. Looks like he might be trying to re-micro this. Actually, he was... Oh, second pass around, he's able to get rid of those Teth Pulsars. Wisely using the Martanks for this, and although the Martanks are still taking a lot of damage, the Teth Pulsars having been destroyed, and the Toronto has free reign to destroy these Zion Pulsars. However, the Martanks are definitely going to be more powerful in dealing with them, and if they get destroyed, that's... It's going to take a while to get rid of the Zion Pulsars with the Foundations in the way. The Foundations healing everything up. But, of course, there are still more units coming in. ATC is coming in now, rather surprising. I'm not sure what he expects to fight with those. I mean, he's been doing quite well with the Tornados so far. The only concern is the amount of damage he can deal compared to the amount of healing the Foundations can do. On top of the Foundations dealing some damage, so it's just... I don't think he's going to win the Attrition Battle. At least not without a... Well, more firepower. If he moves these units in, he should be fine, but he needs that Tornado in there as well to help out. Getting rid of one of the foundations, that will definitely help. Losing that healing. The Zion Veer, of course, able to attack air, and this Tornado is nearly dead. The, the foundation's damage adding up, and we'll be able to get rid of it right now. So losing another one of the Tornados, able to kill one of the Zion Pulsars, but this Martank going down, and the Zion Veer able to get rid of the Tornado, or able to help get rid of the Tornado. The Teth Pulsar is going to be the way to get rid of the Tornado. The Zion Veer is able to hit it, really. It's the only thing that's able to do. But the Tornod still taking enough damage from all these units here to go down. The Teth Veer healing up, and the Foundations helping out with the defense. So Shardan, however, loses the Foundations in the process. Cybernetic Pony is certainly taking advantage of his heavier investment in economy. Which I spoke since point in time, this is all whole time. And he is getting heavy cruisers, so I expect nukes may follow. Probably not will, he doesn't have enough money to buy nukes right now, but he is getting a lot of money. He is... Actually, his income starting to go down. He's starting to lose crates. But he does have expansion to the north, and that's about it. Sheridan is a bit more spread out across the map. But his main base is kind of cornered in. He's pretty much contained at this point. There's not much that Sheridan can do other than just try to get more money from here. He has Zion Veers on the outside. He doesn't have any Shin Veers on the outside. If he had Shin Veers, he'd be in a better spot, sort of. But even then, it's hard to say. Heavy Cruiser coming in, not with a nuke, just with its own fairly heavy damage output. Able to get rid of some of the foundations, but even then, this is still not powerful enough attack. There's not enough units coming in to deal with the defenses that Sharadon has put in. Vector defenses are quite powerful. Even if they are 
Well, not actually, Vector defenses are the big thing for Vector. That's a, that is a thing that they do well. I mean, all the units have this tiny little attack that does add up, and the fact that foundations heal for free, unlike reefs which require energy, and just the way their base is all set up together, they're actually quite powerful on the defense. I've generally asserted that the way to play Vector is to play defense until you get to the Chrono to Gate Tech, and you actually get skip teleport. At which point you can just go around the map with all the units you have. Now, this does require that you don't let any units die in the meantime. They're essentially just building up an army over the course of the game. And at the 20 minute mark where we are now, that's actually a little bit late. I was meaning more in terms of the 12 to 15 minute mark. At this point, Sheridan has been harassed quite a bit, which of course doesn't allow for this. While Saturday Pony has been moving up in the tech and very heavily attacking with these heavy cruisers. Jumping back further again to the 18 minute mark, two minutes down from where we were looking before. Double checking this battle, not much has apparently changed. He is managing to escape with that Tornade. And this Teth Beer is actually being a thorn in the side. It looks like Sheridan has invested a bit more into Teth units once again and is able to deal with this heavy cruiser a bit more effectively than he had in the last iteration. Now, jumping forward about a minute, Sheridan is. Actually, Sheridan appears to have been successful in this defense. But he still needs to worry about this attack coming in, the foundations are taking quite a bit of damage. Heavy cruisers have a fairly large splash radius, and because of that, the foundation healing is getting spread out quite a lot between all the units. Which was unnecessary, but still, it's some, what heavy cruisers do. I mean, it wouldn't, I would not worry about it. Heavy cruisers have large splash radius for a reason. Now, Cyber Nanny pointing back about a minute down from here. Dealing quite a bit of damage, he is continuing to build heavy cruisers, not changing anything else. I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't moved more for liquid crystal investment and started getting gate tech so you can get corona porting and so forth just to really seal the deal because right now he's been sending in a lot of individual units but if he's able to teleport units in rather than just walk them in that would help nullify defender's advantage and if he had corona porting that would also help quite a bit seeing that he's been dealing quite a bit of damage along the timeline if he's able to just cement any one of those attacks with additional units that would probably do the trick that would probably just win in the game right there but he does not appear to be investing in gate tech at all, or even keen on expanding too much other than to the north. When I mean the south is entirely his, this pair of RPs can easily be destroyed. This expansion, having been freed in the early game, now of course still open. Sheridan not reinvesting in that. And Zion Veers trying to crawl to their victory, but not able to do so. Heavy Cruiser is obviously way too powerful. Zion Veers... Actually, this Zion Veers might get lucky. I think it will be able to take care of this Heavy Cruiser. And... No, not quite. The Heavy Cruiser escaping with two health, just barely getting out alive. But between the Zion Veer and the Teth Pulsar, this Heavy Cruiser goes down! The Zion Pulsar actually- sorry, Zion Veer is just not Zion Pulsar. Zion Pulsar would have been cheating. But Zion Veer is just impressive, so Zion Veer actually managed to crawl the victory. The other one not quite able to do so, but... This Zion Veer might get destroyed as it's moving back to base, and... It will have heal enough, and it looks like it might just... No, it's moving out, and it's gone! The Zion Veer has been destroyed. The heroic Valiant Zion Veer that basically played muscle for that Teth Pulsar right there, along for the destruction of the Heavy Cruiser, has died. Cybernetic Pony continuing to build up. Like I said, his economy is much stronger. And Sheridan, he's fighting a losing battle of attrition right now. I noticed he had built an aerial control center over to the northwest, but he hasn't actually rebuilt that or gone for that at this point. We're at the 21 minute mark, but further in the future, it's just... Oh, man. This is not going well for Sheridan right now. He has no tech, and Cybernetic Pony has all of the CISO tech. I mean, Sheridan does have a sneaky decentralized economy, so he's definitely able to stay in longer than Cybernetic Pony might expect. So, Cybernetic Pony might be getting frustrated at this point, which is a strategy, I suppose. I mean, it can work. It's just hard to tell how frustrated your opponent is based on their actions, and I'm not sure how much Cybernetic Pony expects to be able to defeat Sheridan with the units he has. I mean, I imagine he expects to be able to win with the units he has, otherwise he'd be sending more. But it looks like he's giving up on that and instead going for just dealing with the expansions, just harassing around and making sure he gets rid of all these RPs so he can, in fact, completely eliminate Sheridan rather than simply dealing some damage to his base, which ultimately doesn't go through. I mean, there's a lot of units that have been thrown at this base essentially uselessly. Sheridan not quite making up for his economic disadvantage, but certainly closing the gap, at least during that time. And getting Halcyon class, which should be effective against air, so Teth Halcyons mostly are there for muscle. Teth Veer and Teth Pulsars are a bit more effective against air for cost. But Teth Halcyons are much tougher. I think they're about 400 some odd health compared to Teth Veer's 115 and the Teth Pulsars 160. That being said, I think he's probably going to be going probably for Shin Halcyons, given that he's going for Electrical Center at the same time. 
And Shin Halcyons could be interesting, especially if he gets specials and goes for Nanite Tech, which no one ever does. You never really see it. It's kind of hard to use. The amount of control required to use it effectively is difficult to pull off. And Cybernetic Pony attacking the RPs, getting rid of one of the Zion Veer. Zion Veer trying to move into place, getting himself into position to deal with this Heavy Cruiser, but it cannot. It won't be able to deal any damage before the Heavy Cruiser kills it. And the resource processor soon after. Martank also approaching the main base, so Shardin's still getting hit by units in his main base. But the expansions are where he's primarily taking damage. Cybernetic Pony very focused on this harassment, which is the best idea, really. They're, they're completely undefended. And that's where Shardin's be able, being able to stay alive and stay in this game is because of those secondary expansions. He only has three RPs in his main base, and that's nowhere near enough to sustain what he has right now. So losing these out, these peripheral expansions will probably cripple him to the point that he'll lose the game. But we will definitely see. I'm not sure how this will go. Given that Sharon has been very effective thus far in defending his base, it's just that there's really only so far he can go. And he is actually defending these expansions, moving some units into position to deal with the Heavy Cruiser at the Unplayable Pass Edge too. So Cybernetic Pony basically can't do anything from here. He cannot stop this Heavy Cruiser from moving into place, or at least will have a very hard time doing so. So Sharon should be able to take care of it, getting rid of one of the Martanks and... Possibly getting rid of the Heavy Cruiser. Yes, he's getting rid of the Heavy Cruiser. The Heavy Cruiser is gone. It's another Heavy Cruiser gone, which, I mean, Heavy Cruisers are quite slow. So it's not surprising that they go, like I said about air units with mobility, that does not apply to Heavy Cruisers. Heavy Cruisers are too slow for that to work. It's more Frigates and Seppi Legos and Shin Pulsers. That's about it that really, that really benefits from it to an egregious extent. Zion Housing and Teth Housing being built. Zion Housings are quite effective artillery units and meat shields. Not quite as effective for cost as Zion Pulsers, but still, Vekir definitely needs to have hit points in his units, especially in the late game. And that's what the Halcyon class is essentially for. They're meant more to meet shield than they are to be dealing damage efficiently for cost. And it looks like Shradan is moving out. I'm very surprised he did not go for Skip Teleport. Actually, at this point, I'm kind of surprised he hasn't just gone for Gate Tech entirely. Especially, he has a lot of units. I mean, I've mentioned before with Gate Tech that you want to have a lot of units to support Gate Tech. This is what counts as a lot of units. What Sheridan has right now, this is enough units to have Gate Tech be built in the background and be able to support it and be able to make it work. And it looks like Cybernetic Pony has not successfully defeated this expansion quite yet, but he is still moving some RPs towards it. Is he moving more units into Assault? He is moving in a... Well, no, he's moving to defend his own expansion. He might be moving into Assault with the Heavy Cruiser and Tornado right there. But at the same time, this is when Shardin is moving out to attack, and Shardin might be intercepting one of the Zion Halcyons going north to intercept this resource processor, the rest of them going south. No, everything going north? Well, Shardin, why is he going north? Well, at any rate, he's going to get rid of that resource processor, no problem, and attacking Cybernetic Pony's base from the north. I don't know if Cybernetic Pony is prepared for this. He doesn't appear to be pre prepared for this. He seems to be focusing more on trying to just counterattack, but from Cybernetic Pony's point of view, he hasn't counterattacked yet. And this is when the RP is getting destroyed. So, at this point... Shardin actually not revealing his army. Cybernetic Pony not at all aware of what Shardin has coming for him. At the same time, of course, Shardin not aware of what Cybernetic Pony has coming for him destroying this RP. Or these RPs, but right now, Shardin's not in a terrible spot. Not in a great spot, but he does have a massive army. He doesn't have a lot of money in the bank, he doesn't have a lot of income compared to Cybernetic Pony, but he does have a massive army. And if he's able to get in and deal enough damage with it, he should be fine. And Cybernetic Pony getting ground units for the Twin Mars, presumably. And Teth Halcyon trying to do what he can. The Teth Veer not able to survive. Neither unit really able to survive. Lots of damage being dealt to the base. And the main base looks like it's going to go down. We are about a minute down from the present. At the present, this is when Shardin is dealing his damage, destroying what he can of Cybernetic Pony's base. And it looks like it's going to be quite a lot, actually. A lot of things going down. The Akron half health, almost completely destroyed, actually. This is... This is huge. Maybe I should double check the damage here. Okay, no, the Zion Pulsers deal about three quarters amount of damage that the, or two thirds amount of damage the Zion Halcyons deal, but they're considerably less expensive. It, it's really a question of four cost. However, Cybernetic Pony is taking a lot of damage in his, sorry, he's dealing a lot of damage. Sharon is taking the massive amount of damage. His main base is going down. Actually, both players are taking quite a bit of damage. It's just that Cybernetic Pony is taking his damage about a minute after Shadowden is, which won't count for too much, or actually will count for a lot because one thing to note about Assassin Mode is that if you lose your main base and you don't lose your Akron, you still lose. It's to prevent this exact thing, this sort of cheese where the Akron's over in the corner and your opponent has to chase it around for a while. So Sharon really needs to hurry up and try to kill that Akron. And it looks like he actually successfully has. It's hard to say. Saturday Pony may have simply moved it. He may have escaped with it, but I did not see it escaped. Oh no, it is escaped. He's moved over to the top right corner of the map. And Sharon 
appears to be rather uncertain what to do. Going to his main base to defend, this is probably the best idea. See, seeing as he does not know where that Akron is right now, and has not successfully killed it. At least, it doesn't appear to have it. I don't see it on the map right now. Cybernetic Pony is focused around this point in time, so he should be... If it's dead, it should be actually, you know, dead. Cybernetic Pony should have Akron dead listed up here. But I don't see it anywhere on the map, and I certainly don't... S no, I don't see it anywhere on the map. It's not in his main base. It's not up to the northeast. Oh, it is to the northeast. It's just you can't see it on the mini-map. Very well hidden. Like I said, though, it doesn't really matter if the Akron is not killed, but the base is destroyed, then the Akron still loses. Justification being, basically, they have nothing to command anymore. They're just sitting there. Eventually, their opponent will find them, so... It, they lose anyway. And a nuke! Whoa, the Heavy Cruiser actually has a nuke in its possession, but it's not using... Oh, there we go! It is moving into position, but I don't think I'll be able to drop it. And will it drop? It's... No! About half a second before the drop would have been completed... It goes down. Chardon will have to try harder than that to get make that work. And he is, in fact, trying harder. He's moving a bit further in and able to get rid of quite a lot right there. Getting rid of Zion Pulsar and heavily damaging Zion Halcyons, but still losing the Heavy Cruiser. Unfortunately for him, he did not time it to when these units were in place. So Cybernetic Pony not quite making as effective use of the nukes as he... Well, actually, okay, he is making as effective use of the nukes as he could have. Nukes are fairly difficult to use well. Super Weapons and Akron do not make themselves easy to use just because I mean consider the time fact that's time travel it makes it especially with nukes nukes of course you can chronoport back heavy cruisers you can't chronoport back reefs or aerial control centers but heavy cruisers you can which means you could chronoport them back into an unplayable pass nuke attack and that's actually the very reason why there is now a 3.5 second delay on nuke dropping however that's not important right now what is important is Sheridan going for the attack and he is two minutes up from here when the attack hits dealing quite a bit of damage to the base over in the northwest here now, Sheridan looks like he might be rebuilding his own expansion. He's expand yes, he's, in fact, expanding to the north center. Rather risky, but at this point, he does have an army. He can definitely... Well, if he gets skip teleport, he can definitely defend it. He doesn't have skip teleport right now, but he does have a very large army. I mean, seriously, there's two dozen units here. This is the largest army I've seen in a very long time in an Akron game. Well, Cybernetic Pony is rebuilding his own. Cybernetic Pony, however, is two minutes down from here. He is getting some Martanks. He is getting... Another Heavy Cruiser, not going for much else. Martanx and Heavy Cruisers are a good mix. And given that there's no air units coming in, frigates aren't really necessary. So I can't say I'm disputing what he's coming up with. On the other hand, Sheridan is, at this point in time, actually in position to attack. I'm not sure if he's planning on attacking the main base in this iteration or what, because further in the future we see that he is going just for the expansions and just sweeping down through the expansions and then up from the south. Whereas from here, it looks like he is, further in the past, prepared to ex just attack directly from the west. Which is actually a bad idea. The heavy turrets are the defense turrets, I should say. None of them are upgraded. But the defense turrets are set up to completely wipe out any opposition coming in from the west. Coming from the south, however, better idea. And Chardon was doing exactly that. However, being that that's further in the present, Cybernetic Pony is going to have three minutes to defend this. He's going to have three minutes to build up the units he needs to defend against this, and he has the money to do this most definitely. He also has the money very soon to build Gate Tech, if not now. Not quite now. He, has a bit, he needs a bit more QP to do it. But he does have that money coming up. However, for CISO, getting Gate Tech is not as immediately useful as it would be for Grekin. They, of course, still have to build a Chrono Porter. The more important thing is this Twin Mar here. That's the big thing to worry about. And, of course, the fact that Cybernetic Pony has so much money in the bank. His main limiter right now is Chrono Energy. And Sheridan, further in the present, we can see he could actually macro a bit more closer to the present. Not quite in the present, though. Losing one of the macro fabs at the 33-33 mark. And another macro fab going to be going down within a minute after that. Actually, not within a minute, within 15 seconds. What am I saying? He's focusing all of his firepower on that one. Also focusing on the heavy turrets. No, in fact, the macro fab may go down a bit later. The heavy turrets being a higher priority target. Cybernetic Pony, however, being that he is three minutes down from there, has a lot of opportunity to defend, but he doesn't appear to be able to take advantage of it. He does have some units being built up, so this will be very interesting once the blue timeout comes along and we see what's happening. And it looks like there is some defense going on, but Cybernetic Pony not completely pushing Sheridan away. Sheridan still has a chance. Still has a chance to get rid of Cybernetic Pony's base. And this is when the attack occurs from Cybernetic Pony's point of view. 32 minute mark. Jumping up two and a half minutes to the 3420 mark. We see that Sheridan believes he is still dealing a lot of damage to Cybernetic Pony's base. Cybernetic Pony jumping back two minutes is at the 32 minute mark, and he is going... Well, he's not moving forward to defend against this yet. He's losing his expansion still. Probably doesn't have the current energy yet. He does have hierarchy going. He is moving with the heavy cruisers. 
This may be a bad idea. Those Twin Mars are his biggest asset. The Heavy Cruisers are pretty much just meat shield for everything. The Heavy Cruisers are going to be killed by these anti-air units. One of them going down within about 30 seconds. The other one going down within 10. And there it goes. Both Heavy Cruisers gone down. That really needed to be done near the base. More turrets being built up, however. This should be a bit more effective. But even then, with good scouting and that's... I mean, enough units at this point. Chardon is probably just going to be able to brute force his way into that base. We will see, though. Chardon actually at the three, well, 33 minute mark, jumping back right behind Cybernetic Pony with this massive assault force. Not building any more inside of his base, though. He doesn't have a lot of QP left. He doesn't have any. Oh, he doesn't have any power left. Should be, he needs to build more foundations if he wanted to get Skip Teleport working, but he doesn't actually have Skip Teleport. He isn't using the energy of any of his units for anything. However, this defense appears to actually be effective. The defense turrets are able to provide enough cover for the Twin Mar to be able to get rid of a lot of these units. Looks like the defense may still go down, but at this point, Shardan is taking a lot of damage. Losing one of his Teth Fears right out of the gate, and an, or Teth Pulse, I should say, right out of the gate. Blackbird being built up very wise. Cybernetic Pony will be able to heal up his units at his main base. However, the, these defense turrets, two of them have gone down. They're further in the future, about a minute up from where Shardan is, and Cybernetic Pony has lost two of his defense turrets, taking damage on another one. The Blackbird is going down, but very slowly. It looks like these Twin Mars, or this Twin Mar here has definitely paid for itself. Able to get rid of this entire force. Sheridan defending almost entirely with that one Twin Mar. Kind of a shame he lost the Heavy Cruisers earlier on, but still made up for it with that Valiant defense in the Twin Actually, not even Valiant. That well-done defense by that Twin Mar. Sheridan might be undoing this attack, and he really should. And it looks like he is, in fact, undoing it. keeping his units further back. Having lost... Actually, no. Having gained foundations, he has the power to actually get energy back and get Skip Teleport back if he wanted to. He, however, is still kind of doing poorly. His economy has completely collapsed. His center base hasn't really been built up. He doesn't have a lot going for him. Cybernetic Pony definitely heavily defended and getting more so by the minute. So Sheridan right now is trying to deal with what's going on, but he doesn't have any money with which to do so. And Cybernetic Pony is getting himself a very scary army. So we're going to probably see one final showdown and that will decide the game. But at this point, I'm not confident in Sheridan's odds. However, that was a very nice assault earlier on, regardless of how the game turns out. That was a really nice attack. And he still did cripple a lot of Cybernetic Pony's economy. So both players are weak in economy, but Cybernetic Pony has several working RPs left, and Sheridan does not. Sheridan has zero income. Absolutely no money coming in, and not enough money to build another RP. I'm just going to speed this up a bit to carry it along. But yeah, he has no money coming in. And Cybernetic Pony is moving in with some infantry, which will be going down very quickly. They will have no chance whatsoever. I think Cybernetic Pony may want to move that. Yeah, he's undoing that entire thing. Moving north, but not able to deal with the Zion. Well, able to deal with the Zion Beer, but there's no RPs there to deal with. Shardin needs to teleport these guys away. And it looks like more damage being dealt with this RP here. Shardin is losing what few RPs he does have. The ones in his main base are going to be going down quickly as well. But even then, that's... Gonna be a lot. And the Akron moving back forward. This is actually the only way that Shardin has to win. If he kills that Akron, he still has a chance. He really needs to intercept that, but I don't think he can. I think Cybernetic Pony is able to provide enough cover for it with his infantry, and I don't think Shardin is moving in position fast enough, but he might just be. From Shardin's point of view, he is not quite able to get rid of the Akron, but he needs to. If he's able to do that, or he's further being as far up in the future as he, or in, close to the present, I should say, as he is, it's gonna be kind of hard to do that. But even then, if he's able to get rid of that, that's going to be quite powerful. Able to get rid of quite a lot going inside of the base. Getting rid of some of the importers. One of the importers is down. Another one's going to be going down very shortly. So, still working on crippling Cybernetic Pony, but he can't just work to cripple. He has no way of rebuilding from here. Shardin needs to work to win. However, he is moving his RPs over to the north. Looks like he's actually moving to the north center in the island expansion by the statue. Not a bad idea, but he still doesn't have a lot of units to deal with this. The only real thing he has going for him is that Cybernetic Pony has not yet moved his Twin Mars up, but he will, and he has defenses up here as well. Shardin's only chance has apparently gone away, the Acorn having moved in. If he goes for an Acorn, so if he really just dove in for it, he might have a chance. He might be able to kill it in time, but at this point he doesn't have enough units with which to do that. And he's focused far further in the future. I don't think he's quite aware that he's... No, he's not at all aware that he's lost this. He might be now, but like I said, the Acorn Snipe is the best thing to go for, and if he had Teleport... Skip Teleport would be winning in the game right now if he had it, but unfortunately he does not. Because that would allow him to get right in here, right next to the Akron, right on the bad side of the Mar Tanks, and able to take it out, just snipe it completely. But unfortunately not able to do that. However, he is able to take care of quite a few of the Mar Tanks, but not as completely as he'd like. And the Akron moving further south near the defense turrets. 
and there's no way that Sheridan can get in there. None at all. He have to fight his way through, and he's not enough units with to do that. I think Sheridan may be completely out of this game by now. He definitely has his RPs moving up for economy, but it's just not going to work. Sovereign and Pony actually building up quite a few infantry right next to Sheridan's base to finish him off. And successfully defending, keeping his Akron out of trouble, that's... I think Sovereign Pony has this game. I don't see any way that Sheridan can get out of this. He... If he could afford skip teleport, he could have afforded skip teleport back when he had that larger army. He could have gotten rid of this Akron. He could have teleported in and just torn it to shreds right near the unplayable past edge, and that would have been the game. Like, Sovereign Pony doesn't have gate tech. He has no way of killing... Or just like killing the Akron over here in time. And I don't think he's aware of where it is. I think he's just going straight for the base. However, it looks like he is scouting around the expansions. He may end up finding if he just scouts away from expansions to scouts in random nooks and crannies. But I don't think it's going to happen. However, Shardan appears to be in position to start attacking this north base. It'll be interesting to see if he actually does so, but no, he does not. He's moving back towards his own... I don't know why, honestly. And he's getting enough money, he can start rebuilding. He can get more RPs, but he's still in a really bad spot. Getting one in the center of the map. Probably going to build another one fairly soon, and that's certainly something, but it's not going to be everything. He's... Oh, there's... That's where he's building new RPs. Right inside where he was building it earlier in the game. Right at the very start of the game, he's building there, and he's continuing to build in there now. So, Chardon, I still don't think he's going to rebuild fast enough. Cybernetic Pony has much more economy, much more money in the bank, a much larger army to deal with. I think this is game. I... I'd like to see if Chardon can pull out something, but I... I am doubtful just because of how much faster Cybernetic Pony can build up than Chardon. Cybernetic Pony, however, not using all of his economy. That is the one thing. He has a lot of liquid crystal in the bank, not so much Q-plasma, and... Even back when he is, he still has a lot more liquid crystal than Q Plasma. Is not invest. He's trying to move to invest more in Q Plasma, but still, that is the one bond like that might cost him the game at this point. I don't think it will. I think he still has enough of an advantage that it won't matter. But it's interesting coming in and dealing with damage they can. However, between the foundations, he's able to get rid of one of the Zion Pulse with the Zion Halcyon, not taking too much damage. We'll be able to take care of everything there. The infantry, like I said before in an earlier game, quite effective against Zion Pulsers, but not very effective, well, saying now, not very effective against Zion Halcyons. As I mentioned before, Halcyon class being essentially the meat shield. And very effective at that. And it looks like not much has changed, so those units going down, more Lancers coming in to deal with the Zion Halcyon, but Zion Halcyons are not bad against air. They actually have splash damage against both air and ground, and don't deal that much less damage. So this fight is probably going to go Sharden's way. Heavy Cruiser coming in as well, but once again, Zion Halcyon just has so much health, and with the Foundation sealing it up, Heavy Cruiser has to retreat. No more units coming from Char from Cybernetic Pony Shardin. Of course, no more units come from him, seeing as he's still working on rebuilding his economy, and we were actually a minute down from where we were looking from him before. So, Cybernetic Pony is definitely not quite still able to get rid of Shardin's base, but he is close. If he were to move in all these units, or just get Gate Tech, like get a bunch of Q Plasma, get Gate Tech, get a Teleporter or two, and teleport all the Twin Mars into Sheridan's base, I think he'd win. Once again, however, he is going around the map, taking care of the expansions that were built. Once again, crippling Sheridan's economy, but at this point, Sheridan has a bit more liquid crystal. He could rebuild a bit more. However, having no Q-plasma and no, thus no real way of getting tech, I think Sheridan won't be able to rebuild as well from this one as he did from the last one. And that will, that should finish it. But I have a feeling this is going to last quite a bit longer. I have a feeling that it's not over yet. That's still going to be a little bit of time. The players are definitely able to defend fairly well. And it looks like Saturday Pony just destroying the middle base entirely. Going for a score strength strategy on this one. Not letting Sheridan even try to get this expansion up here. And in turn not trying to go for himself. Destroying all the crates instead. And that's going to be interesting. I... Actually, never seen a player do this either. Never seen a player go straight for kill the crates. I've always wanted to, and I've done it myself accidentally a couple times. But going this intentionally for killing off crates, that's that's a good move for Cybernetic Pony at this point, given that he has quite a few RPs. But there's still... I mean, both players have insurmountable defenses at this point. Really, I mean, if this Akron was found, that would end the game. And if Cybernetic Pony scouted around and found it, but he's so focused on getting these expansions that he isn't even noticing that the Akron might be around somewhere and he might want to find it and kill it. I wonder if the players have forgotten they're playing a mode where killing that Akron wins the game. I think that's going to be kind of hard, actually. And with 
Well, more infantry coming in. I mean, Sheridan definitely taking advantage of what money he has getting infantry and getting some vehicles that he can with the infantry. So, Sheridan making wise use of the resources he has, but he's still behind. Cybernetic Pony definitely building up, and with this expansion over here, he's getting enough Q-Plasma to start building up the units he really wants to get. I'm still surprised he has not gotten Gate Tech and gotten Teleporters to move these Twin Mars in. And I'm still taken aback by the fact that he's going for this expansion destruction, but that's exactly what he's done. Successfully, successfully destroying the North Center expansion, and also successfully destroying what Cybernetic Pony had set up at the southeast middle expansion. So at this point, Sheridan, it's really just a matter of time before he pushes forward and wins, but Cybernetic Pony... Sorry. Before Sheridan gets pushed into and loses. Cybernetic Pony, however, will have to deal with a lot of his infantry, and if Sheridan gets away with his north base, you know, there might actually be a way out of this. Sheridan might, with his north sneaky base, be able to keep himself in the game and not lose it out. So this game isn't quite over yet. I, I might be wrong about this one, however... I still think the economy advantage is going to be a big thing, and the fact that Cybernetic Pony is very keen on making sure that Sheridan just does not get any economy at this point, probably the right move. Just make sure that anything that he does not have, that Sheridan cannot take. And now finding the North Expansion, this is this is going to end it. Sheridan really only has one shot at this point to try to win, and I don't know if he's going to even go for it. He does have all of these infantry here, and he is going for it! He is moving out with the infantry and what vehicles he has there, and that's going to be... I don't think it's going to work. But I'd love to see it work. I just don't think it's going to work because of all the Twin Mars in the main base. I think it's going to finish it. I mean, these Aryans here are dealing with damage they can, and they would probably lose this army, but it's the Twin Mars I'm worried about. I mean, the Twin Mars just will rip this infantry to shreds. The turrets are going to get in the way and stop them from taking a lot of damage. However, from the north, the Twin Mars are the first thing to be hit. So it's possible. There's a slight possibility that there might be a way out of this. However, I think Chardon is definitely playing a very risky game. However, it's all he's got. This is it. I mean, if Chardon does not use this, he's lost, so he might as well try. It's either this or throwing the towel. And Cybernetic Pony continuing to destroy what bases he can find. Not destroying this base, not scorch earthing it completely, but definitely destroying the RPs around it. And from here, we see that the final battle appears ready to go, and I guess I was wrong about the one climactic battle decided in the game, because Chardon did at least rebuild in terms of numbers, if nothing else. And here we go, the final attack likely to be starting soon. Cybernetic Pony is getting rid of the expansion in the north once again. He's very committed to this strategy. And I think it will work for him. I think Sheridan, I mean, Sheridan cannot rebuild. He literally cannot re-expand and rebuild. Because he'd have to destroy what Cybernetic Pony has, and he's much more focused on destroying everything around here. And Cybernetic Pony is just destroying everything that Sheridan could possibly expand to. I think this is the entire point for Destructible Crates, and... In the two and a half years this game has been out, I don't recall anybody ever doing this intentionally. I am impressed. Thank you, Cybernetic Pony, for doing something new. Or at least I think it's new. But it's certainly something I've not seen. And here we go, the final battle coming in. A lot of energy dying. Unfortunately, they took point and paid with it for their li or paid for it with their lives. Losing a couple tornadoes, however, and the Twin Mar moving back, another Twin Mar being produced. However, the infantry not able to get in to deal the damage they need to deal. Really, the Zion Halcyon was the Misha that needed to go forward first, and it did not. So these infantry are going down. The Twin Mars just ripping them to shreds. Their only hope is to be spread out enough that only one of them dies at a time. But even with that, they're pretty much getting killed in one shot. Yeah, with the amount of Twin Mars we have here, it's nothing is going to be able to get through this. And with the Heavy Cruisers finishing off everything else, I mean, the Twin Mars are the bigger thing. The Heavy Cruisers are taking the shot. The Twin Mars are not taking much damage. One of the Zion Halcyons is attacking them, but it's gone down... And the Teth Halcyons able to deal some damage to them, but not enough. And the Heavy Crews are going for a nuke to finish off the army. That is it. Chardon has lost his... Chardon has not lost his army. Chardon has absolutely undone that, so that nuke is kind of wasted. A neat little move, but it happened right at the time it came along to move the army into a different position completely. And Chardon appears to have a slightly more advantageous position, but even then he still has the take point and die in the process. So this attack isn't much better, but at least the Twin Mars are out of position. Severing Pony, however, half second down from here, moving this Twin Mars. No, he's not moving them! Moving the areas into position, and he had a couple Twin Mars that were already in... Or, Twin Mars... No, two Mars! Not a Twin Mars at all, but two Mars in position. The heavy turrets... Uh, I'm saying heavy turrets. The turrets are dealing damage. There are no heavy turrets in this game. Wrong game. But a new... Oh, just about to drop the heavy cruiser. Not quite able to do it. Dying before it drops it. Taking too much damage, but it is moving back. There's no Blackbirds to heal up. Nothing really help deal with this. 
I don't think he's going to try to nuke the middle of his base, but he's not going to have this go through. The meat shields are doing what they can for the heavy cruiser, and it looks like it will be able to drop it. It is able to drop... What the heck? It's able to drop it, but there was no particle effect. That was bizarre. Okay, that was a weird thing to happen. But anyway, there was a nuke that went off. That was the important point. A nuke went off and destroyed all the infantry and a lot of the other units that were around here. So the heavy cruiser did his job with the nukes, but we didn't see it happen. Which is unfortunate, because it's a really nice flashy effect. Anyway. More infantry are looking like they were trying to stream in from Sheridan's base, but I think Sheridan might be throwing in the towel at this point. Yeah, I mean, the north base here is also being destroyed. Severing Pony really does not want anything to go wrong with this, and Sheridan basically can't do much from this point. Now he's... That was his final attack, ended by a nuke, which, once again, you never see. I'm, I've, you just never see people using nukes. Granted, that's because they are really hard to use, and that's more just because they're difficult. And Death Halcyon able to get one more heavy cruiser, but that's going to be it. There's nothing more that can be done. Shardin trying to rebuild the money he's getting, but really, it's just a matter of time for Separating Pony to go around and destroy this last expansion, killing him off completely. He hasn't even gone for the base yet, just going for the expansion. More infantry streaming in, trying to do what he can, but this is going to be totally useless. Even with the Teth Halcyon taking point and being the meat shield, the infantry probably won't get in range enough, and probably will die too quickly to defenses to be of any use. Still, not terrible idea. I, I mean, given that he can't really expand, there's no way he can expand right now, except here and try to saturate this base, and that's about it, and that won't be very much. Because, of course, Cybernetic Pony just stopping the economy. He's decided he's not going to allow it. But once again, he still has a lot of area and he, just can't, he can easily disallow anything else from happening too. And like I said, this Akron over here, basically immune to any damage. There's nothing that can be done to it without skip teleport and there's no units with skip teleport that Chardon has. He has never invested in it yet this game. And Cybermarine Pony able to get rid of that last expansion, spotting it, taking care of one of the RPs with the Marine and the rest of it will be taken care of with this Air Force. And that should seal the deal. That will be the game. The army going down. The proxy army is going to go down. But that won't be anywhere near enough. And that's about it. That's pretty much the game. Zion Veers won't be enough to get rid of this, to defend this expansion, to get rid of these air units coming in. And that is it. That is the last economy that Sheridan had. He has no more RPs. He has no resources that he needs to actually get. He cannot actually get enough resources. Even if he had an RP to do the transfer from QP to LC, he cannot do it. This game is done. That main base going down, just making it official. Teth Halcyon trying to do what it can, and actually will be able to take care of this heavy cruiser because it was distracted by the main base. But that is about it. And Skip Teleport is finally being upgraded. Teth Halcyon actually getting Skip Teleport. This is the first time we've seen a unit get Skip Teleport for Shard in this game. Saturday Pony, however, a couple minutes down from here. And he probably will be moving out of the way to... Yes, he's moving out of the way to keep that heavy cruiser alive. While at the same time, a bunch of Tornads come in from the east. The Mars still being used for defense, and no further Heavy Cruisers coming, but these Tornads should finish everything off. Getting rid of the Teth unit, getting Teth Halcyon and Teth Veer, and taking care of the base. This is going to be game. This is it. There's no way out of this. Shardin will lose his base and lose the game by the game end condition. It'd be kind of funny if he found the Akron right now and finished it off, right after killing the base and beating Shardin that way. And getting, adding insult to injury, destroying Sheridan's QP crates inside of his own base. That is just cheeky. I mean, at this point, what can Sheridan do? But still, full commitment to that strategy. I will give Cybernetic Pony that. That is commitment. Actually, it sort of is. He hasn't killed these crates off. But he does have a Marine there, so he could expand to them feasibly. That's kind of how he's been going. If he can't expand to it feasibly, he's going to destroy it. This is the sour grape strategy, people. This is how it works. Sour grapes economy. If he can't have it, no one can. And Sheridan throws in the towel. This is GG. We finally finished this hour-long game. Which wasn't actually an hour long because I sped through a lot of parts of it. Hope you enjoyed that. And that'll be it for me tonight. Have a good night, everybody.